He who has a why to live for can bear almost anyhow. Frederick Nietzsche. No one exemplifies this quote as much as this Japanese soldier. He lived in the jungle for 30 years fighting a war that had ended a long time ago. Today's story is unbelievable, so trust me, you're gonna wanna stick around till the end. Near the end of World War II in December 1944, Hiro Anoda was a soldier for Japan's Imperial Army, who was ordered by his commander to go to Lubang Island in the Philippines. His mission was simple, resist against invading American troops and slow down their progress as much as possible. Anoda's commander, Major Yoshimi Taniguchi, knew this was pretty much an impossible task, so he sternly ordered Anoda to never surrender under any circumstances. He was to keep fighting until a superior officer from Japan's army came back and relieved him of his duties. Major Taniguchi told Inoda, it may take three years, it may take 10 years, but someone is going to come back for you. Roughly two months after that, American troops were able to take over the island with relative ease, and the Japanese soldiers that weren't killed were forced to surrender. But General Inoda and three of his men were the exception. They were able to retreat into the jungle. With the mission still in mind, determined to slow down America's expansion as much as possible, Inoda and his men would come out of the jungle to shoot at soldiers, raid farms, attack supply lines, burn rice fields, and cause as much mayhem as they could. But six months after that, the US dropped atomic bombs on Japanese cities Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And as I'm sure you know, this prompted Japan to surrender, thus ending humanity's second world war. Noda and his three men were cut off from all communication. They had no idea that the war had ended. As far as they knew, the war was still raging on. So they continued their guerrilla warfare, attacking anyone they thought was an enemy of Japan. That means they were coming out of the jungle from time to time, but now they were shooting at villagers and the local police force. They even killed some civilians thinking that they were disguised enemy troops and lived off supplies that they raided from nearby farms as well as bananas and coconuts they found in the jungle. This was obviously becoming a problem, so the US government started dropping off flyers all over the jungle that simply just said, the war is over, come out of hiding. But Inoda was told to keep fighting until someone came back for him. He was told to keep fighting until the war was won. So he burned the flyers, thinking they were a trick by the Americans to get him and his men to show themselves. This wasn't the only attempt either. More leaflets and even letters from the men's families were dropped into the jungle. Megaphones blared with the message that the war was over. But Inoda's orders were even louder. He believed Japan would never surrender, and anything that said the contrary to him was simply a lie. In 1949, four years after the war had ended, one of Inoda's men gave up. He deserted his team and surrendered to local police. In 1954, nine years after the war had ended, a member of Inoda's crew was shot and killed during one of their raids. And in 1972, 27 years after the war had ended, Inoda's final companion was shot and killed during one of their raids on a local farm. Hiro Inoda was now fighting the war and living in the jungle all alone. Because he terrorized the local population for so long, his story started to spread. So much so that a young Japanese explorer who had aspirations of finding the Yeti put those aspirations on hold to look for our forgotten soldier. Norio Suzuki was the explorer's name, and he foolishly wandered into the jungle, and after only four days, he ran into Hiro Inoda. Through a miracle, Inoda didn't attack him. Suzuki's goofy and dressed down demeanor communicated that he wasn't really a threat, and he slept in the jungle with Inoda until he gained his trust and they became friends. Suzuki once again told Inoda, the war is over. Come out of the jungle. Try to get back to civilization and live a normal life. But at that point, Inoda had spent most of his life in the jungle. It's all he knew. So maybe it was his pride. Maybe it was fear. Maybe it was something else. But for some reason, again, he refused to leave. He told Suzuki that he would not leave the jungle until the original promise was fulfilled. He would not leave his post until a superior officer from Japan's Imperial Army flew down and relieved him of his duties. So, on March 1974, after nearly 30 years in the jungle, Inoda's former commander, Major Yoshimi Taniguchi, flew back to Lubang Island to fulfill his original promise. He finally ordered 2nd Lieutenant Hiro Inoda to stand down and come home. He who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. Despite how garbage his living conditions were, despite how depressing his life was, you couldn't convince Inoda to leave the jungle. He had a very strong why to live for, a clear mission, and because of that, he was able to bear living in the jungle for all those years. He was able to deal with the crippling loneliness, the diet of bananas, the violence. Obviously, his story is a little extreme, so I'll let you draw your own conclusions on the man himself. After all, he did kill over 30 innocent people. But for me, his story does serve as an interesting reminder of that Nietzsche quote. It's a reminder that with a strong enough why, you can get through pretty much anything. So I encourage you to re-examine the whys in your life. Do they serve you? Are they beneficial? Do they make you happy? Or... Are you living in the jungle alongside 2nd Lieutenant Hiro Inoda?